Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. So the question uh, for this week was more of a request, I guess. Um, I was asking you guys to tell us, let me see how I worded this. Tell us your favorite part or parts of each member's contribution to a song or songs since uh, 2011. You know, since I've been playing. Well, I, mean, just, I, thought I you want said to hear all about the great things that I've done. I know, we knew. Okay. <laughs> we were analyzing that before you were out of the room to take a whiz. <laughs> we were like, well, I guess Dave wouldn't be able to speak for anybody else's parts. So, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't be fair. The Ouija board. <laughs> all right. So, my. Um, Joe, I chose uh, your solo in um, Ronald Reagan Killed the Black Dahlia. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, I just, <laughs> I love it. Because wow. the Germans loved it. The Germans, it was a very like good solo. In my, in my memory, you did it different anytime you were doing it. And right, it, that's, that, that's the definition of a solo, I think. Not necessarily. It's improvised. Uh, sure. Maybe it's not the definition of a solo. Okay. In this case, it sounds incredible. I can never, I can never do it the same way. Like you had absolutely no idea what you were going to do right before it came up. But that's just my thought. Um, yeah. But I love it because it works with the song and the chaoticness of it, I think. It's also it, inspired. Also, just the guitar part in that is very like Minutemen esque. And I thought that was cool. Um, and I also chose the end of Undertown, uh, that part that we didn't really have an ending. And you were like, how about this? And I was like, wow, it's great. I love it. Not improvised. Not improvised, no. If, if, um, a, solo, if a solo wasn't was different every time, then you know the Brady Bunch where Carol gets to sing the solo and the big Christmas thing? Well, she would just get up there and go, choke my chicken, choke my chicken. So I'm just saying. And it doesn't, so well, you know, a solo can be the same thing, yeah, every time. You're right. Or you could isolate Linda McCartney's vocals and hear a completely different song every time. Sorry, I bring that up every other episode. Um, She's dead, man. She's yeah, dead. come on. No, not cool, man. Not but she cool. can't be offended. She got better and better as time went on. <laughs> yeah, auto-tune. <laughs> um, Rodney, I chose uh, your vocals in general for the, I want to hold your dog, but especially at the very end, just the last like 20 seconds of the song, I just get like chills sometimes because you just, you sound furious about uh, people calling it class warfare and others calling it love. I, I, don't, take, I don't take compliments well. So if you could just like Rodney, you did okay. Like for me, like getting complimented a lot is like Chinese water torture, and I don't know why it is. I think that's why I sing the way I do because I didn't expect to get complimented on it. But yeah, that's, so just say. Well, you probably won't. You probably won't like the other one. Did okay. The other, the other one I chose for you was uh, just the entire song of uh, "Tomorrow Should Have Been Here Years Ago." I just, just everything about it, um, like the lyrics and. You came up with all the music for it, and oh, oh yeah. Always keep it handy, never forget. Yeah, but yeah, I just I feel like that song. I don't know if we've ever played it live, um, but I feel like it's just kind of like I haven't heard much about it, but I love it. I just think it's a great song. So, um, and I also I was going to add as a runner up uh, when Daddy drinks, but nobody knows mm. who I'm talking. About. <laughs> One day. Maybe on the new album, because I think the new album is looking very expansive. And plus with the digital world, you know, I think, yeah, maybe I'll go back to the drawing board. If I get some free time, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the drawing board for when daddy drinks. Daddy's never going to stop drinking. So <laughs> never going to stop drinking. Um, so and Dean, um, I picked somewhere over Antarctica. Um, not just the, the, the sound quality of it, like the production quality of it, but just the the way that you keep that rhythm and what like Joe and I are doing over it and Rodney's keys, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's all I hear in the song. And when I think about the song, I think about the drum beat through it. Um, I just love it. Um, and then I was torn between these two. I think I might choose uh, this one first. The sun turns our patio into a lifeless hell. 
I mean, everybody is my favorite on that. That's like one of my favorite songs. Um, but yeah, just the, the power behind the drums in that song, how it's like kind of low key and then it gets like loud and then it comes back to, um, and I also love uh, Passport to Depravity too, um, <laughs> which is chaos. I was listening to it and I was like, how the hell do we record this song? <laughs> um, but yeah, I just li- the way that you keep time through the whole thing is just um, impressive to me. That's it. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, I approach this a little, uh, kind of the same, kind of di- a little different uh, I, by year. So I'm going to go all the way back to 2021 and the album, The King in Yellow. And um, one of the, one of the songs I really, what's that? This is 2021. No, I'm sorry, 2011. <laughs> I'm sorry. 2112. Who knows what day or year it <laughs> yeah, is? Yeah, year's before. day. We, I don't we, know. we turn ten the clock back, ago. it goes forward. Can't, Why can't we do it with the calendar? 10 years ago. I can't. That album's 10 years old. Yeah, it's 10 uh, years old. Um, uh, I really like the song Buried in the Sky. And I really love Rodney's rattle synth sound that leads into the chorus. Oh, yeah. It's a really great sound. And, um, and I also like the Joe, your haunting guitar in the second half of the chorus. You kind of sit out the first part of the chorus and you come in. Um, you've got this sort of mysterious lead line that's really cool. Um, jumping to 2014, uh, Pretty Music for Pretty People. Welcome to Undertown is also one of my favorite songs. I like everything about this song. Uh, Rodney, your organ sound is, is really great. Um, I really like that Dan and I really locked in on the um, the rhythm of that song because I think it's pretty important to that song. And then I also like Joe's like delay reverb B guitar sound. Um, and both Rodney's uh, keyboard and guitar and the guitar solo that Joe does, I think are great. They lead in from Rodney's solo into Joe's solo. I think that's a great part of that song. Um, Pretty Music actually has quite a few songs that I really, really like. Um, now I want to hold your dog and make it witchy and the sun turns our patio into a lifeless hell. They're also my favorites. And I too love the guitar solo on Ronald Reagan, Killed the Black Dahlia. <laughs> um, if we jump to 2017 to Welcome to the End of the World, um, I love battery powered rap just because it's so bizarre. <laughs> I love your bass part in that song, Dan. And it's just odd. And the whole song is odd, so it, I just, I don't know, I just really like that song. So, um, yeah, I think we have a lot of uh, interesting songs over the past 10 years with some really cool, um, you know, cool sounding and cool, uh, well-played parts. So, that's it. Um, I, I have two, like, new rules that I started. One is, I don't do interviews. Uh, and, and I would like to interview if it's like Space Couch or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but but generally, like music magazines or stuff, I just at one point just stopped uh, talking to them. The other is I don't usually I, I will not talk about old songs. Uh, and because um, it's just it, it's not that it's just something I'm, I'm, I can never get right or I never, you know, it just never feels I never remember stuff. I, I, I tend to move on a lot. And I know that most people, that's what they want to hear about. They want to hear about Big Lizard, but they really want to hear about like old songs. And, and again, if, if it was a, you know, like we were doing a lecture circuit talking about old songs and you were paying 20 bucks a ticket. Yes, I would tell you about it, but just generally, uh, it's not something that, that I regularly do. So I'm going to talk about a new song. And I'm not going to do this the way, I'm not going to do an Aldous Snow, like, you know, they all want to hear African Child. It's just that this is my sort of way of doing this. So on the new album, there's a song called Albert Square. And it is awesome. It is. I had it stuck in my head for like months and months. Um, let me explain it. Dan wrote the chord structure to it and I wrote the melodies and all that. Uh, and, and the chord structure is really bizarre. It's, it's interesting, super interesting because it doesn't follow like a regular standard verse, uh, chorus verse type thing. When you get to some of the verses, the chord structure is different than the other verses. So I was like, what the hell is this? But if you look at sort of like really interesting songs from like the sixties and stuff, a lot of them are just very oddly structured that way. And I really like that. So I was like, at first I was like, what? What? Cool. So I really like that. I like the fact Dean did the lyrics to it. 
Um, and I like I like these lyrics so much that I took Mr. Albert Square and plopped him in another song called <laughs> King Six. So he's actually in there being watched from a window. Um, so I was trying to tie some things together. And I think Joe's vocals on this. Now, you folks haven't heard this song. Joe's vocals are fantastic is what I'm saying here. I'm not just saying and Joe's vocals. I'll I'll. You go, you make that home alone face again, young man. <laughs> <laughs> um, his, his vocals are fantastic. He really gets it. And it, it sounds almost like something you kind of pick, like, picture in your head, some weird like like Jerry and the Pacemakers Mersey beat band playing on top of the pops. Um, it really is like that cross with a weird like Pink Floyd feel to it. You folks haven't heard it yet. But then when you hear it, and you can always say, wait, you can always like look at something and go, wait, what did Rodney say about that? And then go, oh, this is right. I'm hoping when we go in the studio and record it, it'll sound the same way it does in, in the uh, practice space, but um, with, with us screaming at each other and stuff. But it is, uh, um, yeah, I don't do a whole lot on it, and that's fine with me because I'm really super happy with it. I think it's just, it's just a great gelling of everybody together and people sort of stepping outside what they normally uh, uh, do. You know, Dean doesn't normally, you know, he's been writing lyrics since Dean's dream, but that usually falls, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, Dan brought in the whole chord structure. And I don't think Joe's ever sang lead on a song before. I think this might be his, his first time and he's done an excellent job with it. So, um, yeah, so I really, that is, that's just one of my, one of my favorites and, uh, um, and see, and I didn't break my rule because I talked about something new. Cool. I mean, I have a list of all the things uh, from the new <laughs> songs I like you guys are doing, too. But that's for the next episode. And lists. Lists. I have a list. <laughs> oh, I found that funny. <laughs> you made the list, buddy. I made a list. You're on my list, pal. <laughs> Rodney, I really like your hurdy-gurdy in the King in Yellow song. Okay. And I think you even made that yourself. Maybe I did, country. maybe I didn't. I think right. you made your guitar yourself, right? Didn't you cut that from a tree <laughs> cut by lightning? You call it Wonder Boy? <laughs> and I like Rodney's vocals performance in Fascist Groove Thing. <laughs> part, and, of which, uh, part of which recorded right here. It, I, like, I really like the keyboard introduction part to Anthropology Days, which is on the the pretty music from pretty people. That's Dean. I like your marimba. Is it marimba? On, uh, or maybe it is. Oh, yeah. Xylophone? I think it's xylophone, yeah. Xylophone, okay. Flip xylophone. the difference. Marimba phone. Uh, one is metal and one is wood. Yeah, uh, vibes are metal. Uh, xylophone and marimba it's, are wood. Oh, they're but I think okay, there, was a, there was a xylophone at, um, Okay, xylophone. At, at Brian, at the uh, Minor Street. Minor Street. Studio. And it's xylophone. Okay. But isn't and, yours made oh. from, from panda skin and dolphin hide? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> or actually, maybe I brought, maybe I did bring my, I do. I, I do think have a you, you had conceived a part for it, so you must have played it on something. Yeah, I, I yeah. At home. Maybe Malice uses the tears of orphans. Documented it better. So that was done at, at uh, Brian's place. Yeah. Okay. Energy. And uh, I like just about every drum part, but I like the drum, the drums in, um, now I can't think of, oh, the coast is not clear, the way that, oh, yeah, steady, steady all the way through. Um, Dan, I love your vocal solo. It's almost like a whistle in somewhere over Antarctica. Oh yeah. I wish it got mixed up a little higher in the mix, but I still hear it. <laughs> and I still <laughs> it find it hard to believe it. that's something a human made. It sounds like, it sounds like a synthesis. It sounds like not humanly possible yet. I've never, I do it. <laughs> I've never met anybody else that can do it. And when I was in school, I used to put a pen up to my lips and do that sound. And people were like, what is that? And I'd be like, it's a magic pen. And they would give me the pen and then they would try it. And <laughs> I hear that at night when I'm cleaning my gun. <laughs> the sound. But I, I like your, I like just about every bass part you've done. Ah, oh, thanks. Where's the other list? Where are we <laughs> <not getting> another <laughs> list? <laughs> okay, I should say every part. 
That, okay, that's that's it. <laughs> There's a cat in front of me. I'm sorry. I am. Oh. All Damn. right. Well, that was fun. Thanks. Recommendations! I recommend we go on to recommendations. I'm going to recommend uh, <clears throat> a pilot episode of a show that I was uh, involved in uh, very minimally, but it was partially shot like four years ago. Some of it was shot at our show at the Trocadero for Halloween. It's called Puppets in Paradise. And it's the guy who does the puppeteering is a very good old friend of my cousin, Tim. And he had this idea. He wanted to do like a travel show with a puppet and he does kind of like comedy. Um, it's pretty funny. They do, they interview me in it and it's weird. Uh, but you know, the show, it's pretty funny. I think he's trying to sell it to get, you know, a deal to make episodes. Um, there's a lot of dead milkman songs in it. I think he had asked about, you know, the footage from the show and I was like, yeah, and he didn't put any of the live sound, but there's like a half a dozen songs. So yeah, you guys should check it out too. Cause you know, I guess you have your song. I'm assuming it's on YouTube then. I think it's Vimeo. We'll put oh, a Vimeo. Link. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like comedy is the way I describe Dane Cook's act. <laughs> kind of like comedy. I wouldn't even go there. <laughs> It's just a cocaine mess. <laughs> We're going to get sued again, aren't we? <laughs> you said Dan Cook. <laughs> Dan, Dan Cook, that's right. Oh, that Dan Cook. Oh. Um, I have two recommendations this week. Um, one is a YouTube video by a uh, woman named James Stephanie Sterling, uh, who I just became aware of. Uh, They've been doing video games uh, reviews and reporting for various news outlets over the years. Um, but she has a new video out entitled NFTs, Nasty Fucking Things. That is one of the best rants that I have ever heard <laughs> against NFTs. Um, it does have a bit of a uh, video game industry slant to it because um, as she points out, um, uh, a lot of video game companies are sort of jumping on this bandwagon to try and make a quick buck out of it. Um, so I highly recommend you watch this. It's pretty over the top, um, but it's got a really good, uh, it's got really good information in it as well. And the other thing I'd like to recommend is a, a web browser based, um, call it a game or an app provide a link to an article that describes what it is and how it works and then you can actually click on a link and your browser screen will open up the app and then you can start using your arrow keys on your keyboard it's um, by a guy who used to when he was in school used to do doodles where he would just draw right angles and you know zigzag around the page and make these really cool doodles so he built an app that you can do that and you can do it on your um on your computer and i think you're your boys will really like it. So anyway, those are my recommendations. NFTs and Bitcoin are like the Amway of the modern age. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or like, you know, like an insurance salesman. Remember when we used to get trapped in a room with an insurance salesman? <clears throat> and it's like, you know, they have that guy that shows up on um, on uh, Nick's show, Nick Bat's show, um, uh, Sonic Talk. Sonic the Talk. NFT guy that shows up every now and then. I'm like, yeah. you know, I love this show, but I got, I think I, I got some socks to watch out by hand. I saw, and not I even saw, my socks, like, yeah, a, like a homeless person's socks. I saw one of the greatest uh, comebacks you can use when somebody says, hey, have you heard of NFTs? And you go, is that like Cole's cash? <laughs> and quick, by the way, Paisley Skull. Um, so uh, my first recommendation this week is going to be Draven's Mixtape. 1994 revisited. Um, I, I've run into, I'm a little bit older than a lot of folks that um, have told me this, but a lot of folks have told me, I'm always asking people what their gateway was to underground music. Uh, you know, in my case, it was like seeing like the Sex Pistols on, on you know, uh, trash uh, uh, room, and, you know, or, or upset a bunch of interviewers in like 1977 or whatever. Um, and, and so many people told me that oddly enough, it was the movie The Crow and the soundtrack album, and I'm always obsessed with soundtrack albums, soundtrack album to The Crow. And I'm not a huge 
uh, Crow fan, although it's it's uh, um, very sad that Brendan Lee, I think, could have been a great actor uh, who was killed uh, on set there. But um, a lot of people have been really impressed by it. So this has uh, this is a remaking of that soundtrack album. And it has a lot of the people that I mentioned on the show a lot. Uh, it's got Caustic. It's got Go Fight. Of course, Ego Likeness are on there. Um, but it's interesting because some of the covers are covers of covers. For example, when I sent this over to Dan, so he served this stiff Valentine on this to an incredible cover of the, uh, the Badge, which is a Pantera cover of a Poison Idea song. And it is, it fucking kills. It is so good. And then there's also a song that I didn't care for originally when it was done by um, the Violent Femmes. Uh, and that song is, um, uh, what, oh, yeah, Color Me Once. And, but actually Null Device do it on this and Null Device kill it. So it's really interesting to hear this. I'm always fascinated by abstractions of abstractions or other people's takes on it. So again, uh, we'll put up the link. That is Draven's Mixtape. 1994 revisited. I don't think 1994 is that was well, it was pretty good. As a year I got married. So there we go. Pretty good year for me. Um, and I play a couple of these tracks on my latest radio show. So there's a plug for me. Um, I'm going to, we'll, we'll throw in the, uh, um, the link to uh, this month's November's radio show. Now sponsored, by the way, by Gherkin of the Sea. It's the only Gherkin packed in tuna oil. Mm, it's good. Uh, and then the other thing I want to recommend is, that's a real sponsor. I'm not making that up. <laughs> um, the other thing I'm going to recommend is if, if you have HBO, I don't know if it's on regular BBC or whatever, BBC America, but you can get it on HBO Max. It's a show called Ghost. There's three seasons of it out there. And this show kills. It is so good. It's two sort of down and out people who wind up inheriting an old English manor where a bunch of ghosts reside. And they really thought this out. They thought of what would it be like if a bunch of ghosts lived in a house? So, uh, for example, you have uh, the ghost of a caveman, which I'm always, I'm always asking. If people see ghosts all the time, why didn't anybody ever see a ghost of a caveman? So they have a caveman. Um, they have a Tory MP who died while having sex, so he has his pants off. And this is based on a real Tory MP who died during autoerotic asphyxiation. To kind of give you an idea where the show goes, um, there is a, um, a plague pit in the basement which is very clever because it's, it's Britain. Uh, there is a, um, there's a woman who was burned as a witch and she gets an interesting line in when she talks about what happened to some of the other ghosts that are no longer there. And she says, oh, they were sucked off. So many people have been sucked off. And, so, and this woman's trying to say, they moved on. They moved on. She goes, oh, I used to dream of being sucked off. It's just <laughs> move, moving on, moving on. So the show is it's brilliant and it's very funny. It, it, it's crude, but it's also very intelligent, which I love. I love that mixture. And it's also very heartfelt. Uh, Robin the Caveman is, is very clever. And at one point he's talking to Pat. Pat is a, a Boy Scout leader who got shot through the neck with an arrow. Um, and he's talking to him. Pat's family is supposed to come. And, and, and he's worried they're not going to show up. And the Caveman says, you know, when, when you die, at first a lot of people come to visit. And then over the years, fewer and fewer of your family comes. And then nobody comes, but maybe you find new family. He's talking about the other people. Uh, there's a whole other one where he's talking about his fascination with the moon. And they're like, oh, no wonder your people built Stonehenge. Like, Stonehenge is a cheap copy because we're talking about what used to be there. And he says, he, he calls the moon Muna. And he says, you know, um, basically what well, you wouldn't know. I don't know why I say, you know, um, he says, uh, um, you know, before you, before the house, there was Muna, which is great. But then they also explained to him that man landed on the moon. So he watches a moon landing video, but they leave it run because it's YouTube. This woman leaves it run. And then he sees all these conspiracy theories. So the caveman buys into the conspiracy theories. And it's great when he walks out, you know, one guy's trying to judge this, this guy's head cut off and they're trying to use it to play volleyball with and the one guy's judging it in the caveman because yeah listen to the man you don't know that paul mccartney died in 1966 it's really really good um there's an american version of it on cbs i can't bring myself to watch it uh because i remember what america did to when they made the american version of absolutely fabulous where they couldn't smoke drink or have sex they they when america gets a hold of a british show they they pretty much do to it what cell block c wants to do to the q anon shaman so it's um it's it's never a good thing so it's uh i i, I would say avoid the american version vienna tried to watch a bit of it and said it, it wasn't nearly up to snuff but but please uh if you really want to have a, a really good time devour all three seasons of ghost uh, if you have hbo max that's an easy place to find it thanks i'd like to recommend for your taste buds 
and your stomach, Upton's Bacon Satan. It is a, a vegan version of bacon strips, and they taste amazingly like bacon. You don't get the the muss or fuss of bacon fat, though, and I guess you don't get the guilt of having Eating an animal. caused a pig to be murdered, but... <laughs> It's, is it is it named after Upton Sinclair? Maybe because it's Upton's. <laughs> That'd be it's Upton's. Kind of weird. I had an idea Upton's once for Upton Sinclair's The Jungle Book, which would be Upton's the Jungle Naturals. Book. Upton's Naturals. like a factory. <laughs> <laughs> it's like vegan and tasty. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was. I got a really mean rejection slip on that. Sorry, John. I didn't mean to interrupt. Rare necessities. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you just heat it up and eat it. You can put it with eggs if you're. If, if you're not, if you're vegan, you can't have eggs. But. Can you, do you think you can trick people into thinking it's real bacon? Uh, on the taste, probably. On the texture, probably not. But it's, I like it. I recommend it. I tricked my rabbi into eating a bunch of it. <laughs> I feel like the fake bacon I've seen and eaten, it's like hard and flat. So it's like it. And then they tried to make it look like it by having different colors. And it's like, no. No, they don't. They don't, like bacon. they don't try to make this have different colors, but Upton's bacon is made from the creatures of the jungle. Just <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks uh, for indulging. You're welcome. Happy Remembrance Day. This is a great book. This is my other recommendation. And happy Poppy Day.
some lies 